and welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Let's do something a little different today. I'm sure many of you who have flown sims for a long time have wondered, I wonder if I could actually fly a real aircraft. But like most people, you probably haven't actually gone and done it. But here is Jonathan. Jonathan is going to do exactly that. He's at um, the Koyan Airport, if I've got that right. Sorry, John, if I got that wrong. Uh, in the Philippines, John is a dedicated uh, X-Plane 11 and DCS flyer of recent times. And uh, he had that question over his head. Could I actually do it? He spoke to me about a little while back and thought, what should I do? How should I go about it? So we chatted on a little bit, being that I've got, I do actually have my own license. So here he is taking off at on runway 30 at his well local airport now what did he do to get to this this place well he's done a lot of training for start well he's done a lot of his home training on the pc he, again he has had no formal flight training now while he was doing this flight he had a uh, cfi with him so, and I just wanted to give you some comparisons between the real world and what you can do in X-Plane 11. This does have ortho scenery and uh, I have built up the airport and surrounds a little bit with overlay editor to give it a little bit more of a realistic feel. But just, you know, you can make your own judgments if it's good, bad or indifferent. But I think it's now it's pretty reasonable considering <coughs> technology we have available. So around we go here on the upwind leg. And, uh, and we'll be turning downwind in a moment. But so, what did he do? He approached uh, the CFI that he flew with. Um, I've got the gentleman's name at the at the end of the video. And he said, "Well, if <laughs> I want to see you do it, so he, I believe, he went round to his home and watched him fly X Plane Eleven on his home PC before he said, "Well, okay, I think you're safe to fly." And then from there, they organized a time, went out, no doubt, had a bit of a look around the uh, the 150. Now, the only job that the CFI had to do in the aircraft was to do the radio, I believe, and just ensure that everything was done correctly and safely, which is always the first thing. I'm not telling anybody that should go out and grab a, uh, a Cessna 150 or 172, not tell anybody and go flying. That would be pretty dumb. But what you could do is go out and get a flight with a CFI and just say, maybe you can say to him, um, look, I'm, I think I'm pretty well trained. May I do it by myself? And if you see any, anything that's wrong, then, then highlight me, highlight light it to me. So it is pretty, it's pretty good. You know, I've flown for many, many years on, uh, on FSX and other flight sims before I found FS, found uh, X-Plane 11. And when I did my uh, own license, I didn't. I only had FSX to train on. So, you know, whatever platform you choose to use, um, will no doubt give you a very good leg up on understanding what you need to do. You do your own training and understand the parts of the circuit. Now, as we turn onto final, onto runway three zero at the airport, and I found the whole um, experience, my first flights were done on a GA uh, situation in a Diamond DA-20 and I immediately felt at home um, from, the, from the moment we pushed the throttle forward, um, he actually, the, the CFI actually did the takeoff but he gave me the aircraft as soon as I was up so I was, as we were rotating and starting our climb he gave it to me and from that point on it was mine. And, uh, you know, I turned right and, uh, you know, told me where I needed to go because I wasn't familiar with the airspace. And, uh, and and away I went, you know. I was automatically trimming the aircraft. I caught him glance at me a few times going like, well, you should know how to do that. So these are all things that Jonathan and you guys and girls out there certainly, um, I'm sure, would be capable of. So here's the approach uh, in X-Plane 11. So it's not too bad. Now the some of the textures are, are not quite right, but the buildings are as close as I can possibly uh, give them to, for you. And and you're welcome again. Like all my airports, if you'd like a copy of this, just send me a message. You can have all my airports 
and you can go ahead and install them around Australia in the US and there's a couple here in the Philippines as well now so roll just coming in just trying not to drop it onto the runway and here comes Jonathan in now we need to land past that line you can see on the runway okay we're not supposed to touch down prior to that line that's where the runway actually starts you do have a lead in area so he does pretty good he's just holding it off and you can just see the little bump there he is he's on the ground so he held it off really really well I'm not sure if there's any uh, stall buzzers going off but I think it would be going pretty close and there goes the power again back on for this touch and go so you come in in landing configuration so your flaps will be down and your heels will be uh, if you're doing this will be off the onto the ground as well so you just got your toes on the pedals normally so that you're not tempted to hit the brakes if you're not intending to stop and uh, what you need to do though is once you're down on the ground you need to reset your trim quickly and uh, get your flaps back up if you don't want them for the takeoff or for the roller and uh, and then you continue on so that all happens very very quickly and it's obvious that uh, he's been able to do that get it all sorted out and here we are on the upwind leg, leg I think we are as we head down looking into the sun that's not doing a lot for the camera you can see the uh, the strobing there of the prop that's something that just happens because of the different frame rates between cameras and uh, what's happening with the prop out there so we're going to go around so we did a great job of doing three touch and goes or two a takeoff a touch and go touch and go and a landing is that right does it count to three so we again heading down the back of the the downwind flight or downwind part of the leak interested to know if any of you guys out there have thought I wonder if I could do it or if you've actually gone and actually tried it out for yourself um, in this situation this is fairly unique in that Jonathan's actually gone and asked not to be helped at all unless there was a requirement for it and uh, to see whether he was actually capable he is very very keen to try and get an aviation job um, but we all know it can be a bit on the expensive side with all the training that you need to do so if you happen to be watching this and you're from a uh, an airline or a, a training facility or something like that and you uh, you appreciate what this young man's done then uh, feel free to drop me a line and I'll put you in contact with him and I'm sure he would love to speak to someone because I know that's where his heart is it's uh, it's in aviation that's where he wants to be so we're on the it looks like the upwind or the downwind sorry where am I on the base so we should be turning left fairly quickly to come in and uh, and do another touch and go I think it is at this point as we come around in the airport weather looking pretty nice I believe on the day there wasn't a lot of wind so it was it wasn't too bad and have to worry about um, cross wind corrections and things like that scenery looks very green doesn't it typical uh, Asia that's what it looks like here in Thailand it's all very green Lots of water around, so I think we're uh, around about ready to turn and go final again. Now, if you're new to the channel and you haven't uh, had a chance, please feel free to subscribe, hit the bell button. We, I put out videos every week on uh, Saturday and on uh, Wednesday, and uh, you'll be able to watch those. If you're returning then thanks for coming back there was uh, John <laughs> the uh, uh, video they took with the camera is um, just time-lapse so it's a little bit on the fast side so here we go again coming in for another landing into the distance very gentle on the turn which you should be should never be throwing an aircraft around at low speed you will end up spinning into the ground as uh, many have found to their um, detriment ok 
Okay, ready to turn final. Here we come in the 172. And I'm sure Jonathan's going to be doing exactly this in a moment. We'll be able to watch him come in for another touch and go. Coming in gently. And in and over the top. Okay, and here comes Jonathan yet again. Coming in. Got it lined up nicely. It's nice and shallow. It's nice and shallow. This is how it normally looks if you're doing, uh, you know, when you're landing an aircraft. There are different schools of thoughts. My landing practice has always been a lot steeper because most of my, my instructors were all glider pilots and they had this thing for um, doing glider, essentially glider landing. So they're a lot steeper and always ensure that you would have enough power. So if you land like this and you lose power, you may actually land up short. There's probably a hell of a lot of arguments out there on which way is the right way to do it. But uh, there are different schools of thoughts in many things. Many of them are not wrong. There's just a different point of view. So we're pulling up. We've got the brakes on. So that's our final landing. So you can get the aircraft pulled up quickly. You don't need to be jamming onto the brakes. You just take your time. Let it run out of speed. Now if you're not sure, the, the braking on this in the Cessna is done on the rudder pedals. Um, but there are aircraft that are around like the Jabiru, which uh, I was flying in Gawler, and its brakes are not differential. That means you can't have a right or a left, you can only have both. And it's like on a handbrake in the middle. Uh, in the middle between yourself and uh, your instructor or the other seat if there's no one with you. So we're taxiing back down, backtracking on runway 30. And uh, it's it's been interesting to watch this and listen to Jonathan and see all his uh, his videos. So it's it's pretty outstanding that he's done this. I think it's uh, I, I certainly wondered whether it was something that would be possible if someone would stand or sit next to you and allow you to do that. But he has achieved a hell of a lot uh, in doing this. So now I think we should all wish him well. In, in hoping that he gets uh, the opportunity to fly uh, as part of his life. That's what he uh, wants to do. He wants to be a pilot. I hope he achieves that dream. Now, there are many ways that you can fly, depending on your own country, guys, no matter where you are. Um, I know a lot of you guys are in the US. If you're looking for a less expensive version of flying, there is uh, Light Sport which only requires you that you have a uh, driver's license in the United States is limited to uh, an aircraft that can fly at 120 knots even if it's capable of more and uh, your stall speed has to be right down in the, the very low 40 so it's very very slow uh, great flying um, all VFR during the day uh, no, no towered airports but in the United States as it is in Australia there is a huge amount of area you can fly around, which um, is it's not restrictive at all, guys. If you would just love to fly, but you want to do it at a, a less expensive way than doing it with general aviation, because that tends to be a lot more and a lot more expensive. Bigger aeroplanes, more costs, so it costs you more. So here's John coming in on his final taxi back, quick landing and taxi back there with his instructor. So yeah, Jonathan, no formal tr flight training. He did the whole flight under supervision. Uh, he did his engine start, pre-takeoff checks. He did his taxi takeoff, touch and goes, and the full stop landing, along with the taxi back and shut down uh, with just his X-Plane 11 training, which is, uh, again, pretty good. I think everybody should thank Mr. Peralta for taking the time and uh, allowing him to, to do that. Um, it's I think there's a lot of people may have been a little bit dubious on whether that was the thing, but uh, great, great thing 
uh, obviously they were very happy and very impressed with the flying that he did so I hope you've enjoyed that guys it's uh, it's a great story and something that um, everyone um, is very more than capable of so well done Jonathan you did a great job and uh, again another big thank you to Mr. Peralta for um, taking the time and letting him do it congratulations on what is a great great thing really good so until the next video i will catch you back here at let's fly vfr again real soon and i will be back in australia so i hope i see you around i will catch you then bye bye